Uh, Mike Tomlin has spoken after unknowingly being broadcasted on Facebook Live by Antonio Brown during his postgame speech after the Steelers win in Arrowhead. Let's just say Mike T was not failing it. It was foolish of him to do that. Um, it was selfish for him to do that. And it was inconsiderate for him to do that. Um, not only is it a violation of our policy, it is a violation of league policy. And uh, I definitely don't want that to be his story. I'm sure he doesn't want that to be his story. Um, so he has to address these things um, that put him and us in positions from time to time uh, as settings such as this where it needs to be addressed. In the aftermath, Antonio Brown posted an apology on Twitter. First, I'd like to take this opportunity to say that I am sorry for my actions and behavior after Sunday's game. I let my emotions and genuine excitement get the best of me, and I wanted to share that moment with our fans. It was wrong of me to do against team and NFL policy, and I've apologized to Coach Tomlin and my teammates for my actions. I'm sorry to them for letting it become a distraction and something that they've had to answer questions about while preparing for a big game on Sunday. A.B. also saying he apologized to Tomlin and his teammates for what he called a distraction there. Stephen A., what's your reaction to the latest on Facebook gate? Well, first of all, I applaud Mike Tomlin for handling things the way that he does. He's as straight up as they come. He's a man amongst men. Uh, you know, he conducts himself in that fashion, and I deeply appreciate the way uh, that he spoke so candidly about it. This is not to excoriate Antonio Brown and act like suddenly he's the worst dude on earth or anything like that. Uh, you speak to people about him, he's highly professional, he goes out, he puts in the work, and he obviously goes out in the field and perform, and he deserves a lot of credit for that. But like I said, when we talked about this on Monday, it was incredibly inconsiderate what he did. You know, first of all, the locker room is about the locker room. Secondly, you're not even talking about yourself or you're not even talking on Facebook. You're playing everybody else and picking up all of that sound. And for the coach to be addressing a team, you not paying attention to the coach is one thing. That's bad enough. But more importantly, to sit up there and to play all of that on Facebook Live and to put that coach in such a compromising position is the epitome of selfishness. It shows what Ryan Clark, a former Steeler, a former champion with the Steeler, came right on these airwaves, right in that seat, Teddy, and alluded to when he said about Antonio Brown, it wasn't malicious intent or anything like that, but he's about himself. He was thinking about him. He was not thinking about the coach. He was not thinking about the team. And that cannot be tolerated, which is why, Max, I totally, totally applaud Mike Tomlin coming out and speaking so candidly the way that he did. It was foolish. It was selfish. <laughs> 17 and it wasn't minutes is a long time. 17, 17 minutes, minutes is a long time during a, a moment that I always considered special. Yes. Right, that, that post-game message from your head coach, because during the week, we as NFL players, we get barraged by our coaches about this guy's this good, this guy's that good. You're not going to stop him if you do that. And they tell you all the instances, all the examples of if you don't do this, you're going to lose. You have to do this to win. So it's a mental type of hammering you down to make sure you get the message. So after you win the game, I always cherish that moment because now you told us all week how good they are. Now this is the point. You tell us how good we are. Mm -hmm. now, tell, now tell it to us. I want to hear it. He didn't want to hear that. He didn't want to hear Mike Tomlin say how we won this game. You did a great job. Let's move on to the Patriots. And then your captain, Ben Roethlisberger, giving his message. So that was a little twisted for me, not to see him value what was being said right there. Um, receivers are divas a lot of the time because they're the home run hitters, mm -hmm. right? You think about not, not Jerry point, Rice, Max. right, the greatest who ever lived, and maybe a lot of receivers should take a look at that and say, oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Not the most talented guy, but he's the Babe Ruth of receivers. He's the Michael Jordan of receivers, and, and he was more buttoned up. Um, but T.O., Chad Ochocinco, Randy Moss, right? Odell Beckham yeah. Jr., Antonio Brown. We didn't know Antonio Brown was in that category. And then he played himself. Like, now we know. Um, I love what Mike Tomlin said. First of all, everyone in, in, who watches football has had a man crush on Mike Tomlin. Every guy has since his first press conference. Steelers football. Who's Mike watch. Tomlin? Yeah. Who, run the ball, up. you know, stop the run. That's the guy. That, oh, he killed, in the, he killed in the meeting? No kidding he killed in the meeting. That's the guy. And he did it again. He does it every time he speaks publicly. Bill Belichick's a greater coach. He's better than everybody. It's not even close. But if I were a football player, I want to play for Mike Tomlin. And the, the most interesting thing he said to me, and, and a lot of people missed this, was some guys don't stick with one team. Some guys yeah. move around. Mm -hmm. 
Antonio Brown, an otherworldly, almost Jerry Rice level prime so far, on a team with a chance to win the Super Bowl, and the head coach going into a game against the greatest dynasty in the history of football. This, these Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, New England Patriots, yeah. including the teams you were on, it's an unbroken dynasty, really. You're going into that game, and your head coach has to say about you an otherworldly talent. Not everyone sticks with one Putting team. him on notice, it letting is. him know no is, one's I mean, untouchable. That, that tells me that this is not the only time. I mean, this is, this is probably late for meetings. I mean, not, not showing the focus you need to show throughout the week, constantly doing this through the hallways, or this is social media is just big for him. So this is a problem. I didn't think Mike Tomlin would go there. Mm. But I'm telling you, that little, that little sound clip of Tomlin after the game can easily be twisted into motivation by Bill Belichick. I will, and I say that because of this. It goes all the way back to Cordell Stewart after we beat them in 2001, and after the game, he says the going. better team didn't win. All right, after that. A couple years ago, it's the headsets. Now, in this type of little blip you get, he's already complaining about the day and a half of you extra You know what's crazy too, Teddy? So it's like- And the headsets again. Yeah. And the headsets again. So it's, 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 this is the type of thing that irritates the coaching staff. It pours over into the players, especially in the Saturday meeting. I mean, I've been in, I've been in, I mean, before we played the Carolina Panthers in the Super Bowl 38, Bill had just been fed up with all the trash talk throughout the week to where we were coming in and they're talking trash to us in the pregame warmups also. And he went off in a way that I had never seen him go off on players, on players in terms of name calling, very similar to yep. Mike Tomlin, probably a little, yes, more than Mike Tomlin did there. So it gets to these coaches also when you hear other coaching staff have constant excuses. I'll call them, okay. Yes, absolutely. So these teams don't like each other. That's the bottom line. Let me say this, a couple of things. Antonio Brown is a former sixth round pick, 195th overall, 2010. Over the last three years, he's got, what is it, 371 receptions for over 4,800 yards receiving. This dude gets it done. I did not peel from what Tomlin said anything that would allude to unprofessionalism in terms of preparation and game day performance. What I peeled from what Thomas said, Teddy, was when he said everybody's not with one team and what have you, he was alluding to the fact that you can't have dudes around you can't trust. That's an entirely different, now you have guys, and I don't know this, you play for Bill Belichick, you won championships with Bill Belichick, you would know. But I believe coaches like that, you could be great, but if they can't trust you and they feel that there's an issue of trust where you will chirp outside the locker room, where you will sit up there and inconvenience or be inconsiderate to teammates and personnel and do things, Max, that would compromise them and stuff like that. I believe those kind of coaches are like, we can win without you. Martavius Bryant, you know, he's applying for reinstatement, but we all know because he couldn't stay off the weed, he's not there. They won without him. Le'Veon Bell yeah. suspended the first three games. They won without and him. And what Antonio I mean, Brown did, different ways. what's crazy about it to me, Teddy, just piggybacking off what Stephen A. said, really, is that that was Coach's message. If you listen, as Tomlin is giving the message, essentially, don't let him hear you coming. Don't do anything on social media. Don't get, essentially, don't give Bill Belichick bulletin board material. Antonio Brown is doing the exact thing thing live on Facebook that coach is telling them not to do. And the fact that there's another game, there's still more to be yes. played. I mean, yep. If there's any way this would be okay with me is if you've got a Super Bowl championship. You want a title. And, and, this title, is a, this and it's over. Yeah. It's like, right. boom, I got to right. record mm -hmm. that. That's understandable. But the more instances Still, you need to you let have, people know, though, that you're filming. Yes. Even in that I, sense, still let people know. Uh, yeah. in, in, in that instance, I mean, but if you're, you're not thinking about it, maybe don't put it on. Maybe don't put it on. You don't care, Molly. Yeah. After you, you won the Super Bowl, you don't care. Yeah, it's like whatever. It. I yeah, got a yeah, towel yeah. around. Whatever, yeah. man. We but just it, won the Super Bowl. The but Super Bowl. it makes it easier to part ways organizationally from players that have this type of track record. Yeah. So, this memory banks up everything that's Antonio Brown's done up until this point. I'm sure they have it written down inside of their head, mental note. And now this. So if there's another one, then the next time comes around, it's like even your teammates are like, you know what? He got to go. Yeah. He got to go. Even though how good he is, because no matter how productive you are, 
I think even the Patriots have shown this they're shown this year there is a way still to win football games. Championships you get to there when you when you get to the certain point you need them to win the championships. Right. Same, still, NBA. The same I, I want to get, I wanna get into yeah. that right now the impact in the game but I do think but, there's something there's something to be said for somebody who's relatively unknown all of a sudden has all this fame and just doesn't know how to act or handle it. Well, you got to also remember don't do just that to Antonio Brown. He's trying to get his money. And unfortunately, in today's NFL, people believe that the more sizzle you get, the more shine you get, headlines you get, that could facilitate you ultimately getting paid. Because remember, he's had contract issues. Even though they gave him a bump, a raise, he's still looking for a long-term deal yep. this coming offseason. But the other thing to point out is this. Mike Tomlin, I know the man a little bit. Mm -hmm. And for him to say what he said, the way that he said it, again, there's an issue of trust here mm -hmm. and he's sending the message sure. that ain't gonna be tolerated yeah that ain't gonna be tolerated Violet. let's move on to the game so so we obviously saw what happened to the new york giants at lambeau after they dealt with that yacht club controversy <laughs> now the steelers have the same issue how do you see this impacting the game on sunday i don't see it impacting the game but that's not what's at issue at stake for antonio brown just as it was for odell beckham jr after the whole thing with the Yacht Club and everything, what did I say at the time? It, whether or not it's fair, whether or not it's, it's caused, even if it's just correlation, yep. you're the star, this is out there now, Odell, two things have to happen. You have to ball yeah. and your team better win. Now Antonio, he didn't ball and his team lost. Now Antonio Brown, I'm telling you right now, two things, you better ball and the Steelers better win because on top of everything else I brought this up yesterday Julio Jones Antonio Brown Odell Beckham Jr. shuffle them however you want right now Julio Jones is number one after what Odell just did and now this with Antonio Brown where there's an edge it's Julio Jones right now disagree with you in that regard I'm not ready to say what kind of impact this is going to have because I have to see how the next couple of days unfold from a media perspective. Them being in his face, him having to talk to the media, explaining himself, what the mood of the team is, monitoring that in the days to come. I'll get to that Friday. But as it pertains to Antonio Brown right now, you saying he has the ball. I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm saying don't compare him to Odell Beckham Jr. Odell Beckham Jr., that was his first playoff game. We saw nothing from him. This was his moment, his first moment. Antonio Brown already in two playoff games this season has 11 receptions for 232 yards. Making it this worse if he doesn't ball after no, this. No, because what I'm saying to you is that he's been there before, has shown what he can do in the postseason before. I don't think the pressure that was on Odell mm -hmm. Beckham Jr., who had never been in a playoff game, is I think it's different with Antonio because we already know what Antonio can do. Now, granted, you need to perform because we'll be talking about you if you don't, but it's not like, oh, my goodness, you didn't step up. Yes, and it's worse because but if I he think, does without this and then this happens and he doesn't, it's even worse. And I think what Mike Tomlin said about the players moving from team to team is, 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 a, is, a, is a statement to say, I don't care what you've done in the past. I don't care what you've done in the playoffs in the past. I don't care how many out pro, out pros with 300-plus catches in the last three years from this point on. We're watching even more closely. And as a player, I think he does need to play because the stage is already set. The stage is already set for him, for everyone to look at him and already have an excuse if you fail per individually. Individual, if he fails and drops three balls like Odell Beckham Jr. did. That was, that was a catastrophic choke, in my opinion. Just dropping the ball the way he did. And the, the game was on the right line. In the bread Number basket. one player. All right. I don't see A.B. doing that, all right? Because I think his past, not, not his first game, first playoff game, so I'm with you on there, but... What Mike Tomlin said, we will punish him and not us. I agree with that 100%. So we will punish him in the pocketbook, whatever it may be, but not us. He's going to play, and he's, and he's going to be asked to perform as teammates you hope he does. Let's also remember the fact that last year when he didn't play because he got concussed severely by Vontez Perfect in that wild card playoff game right. against Cincinnati, you have an abundance of people that believe it would have been the Steelers in that AFC championship game and, set, you know, uh, and, and possibly the Super Bowl had Antonio Brown been eligible to play. Well, why is that? It wasn't just because of his talent. It's because of what we We've seen him do in the past in those big moments so again there's nothing to question whether or not he can perform in the there's moment one thing, though. it's just that you know what now you brought this attention on yourself there is one thing. you owe it to your team is what Tom was saying Odell, you owe it to us. Odell Beckham early junior early in the year remember his teammates were scrapping and getting and, and, and getting penalties and what that said to me is whatever else you could say about Odell a lot of his teammates like him a lot of his teammates were had his back 
The problem with for Antonio right now is let's say he balls, but the Steelers lose. People will point to this as a distraction, and the question will become, do his teammates like him? Does That's the sweet. locker room That's like a good him? Point. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, Max, because you could tell Tomlin was obviously irritated. If the head coach has gotten that irritated, can you imagine well, how to play, what the players well, well, we're here talking with you. You play for the Patriots. When you open your mouth, as far as I'm concerned about the Patriots, it's gospel. You understand? Ryan Clark won a Super Bowl championship with the Steelers. Did you see Ryan Clark? Yeah. Yeah. Ryan Clark wasn't just sitting here yesterday on this show talking as an analyst. He looked irritated. Why? Because when you're a member of a family, correct me if I'm wrong, if I misspeak, mm -hmm. but when you are a member of a family and dudes are talking about how they feel betrayed, you take that personally because what you're saying is we know what the code of ethics is in this confine, in this, you know, in this environment. This dude violated something. And, it, and, and Ryan Clark went on to further say, excuse me, this dude is about himself. Those but are that. So you get all of that and you listen to Tomlin. It's like, whoa. Real quick, that's why what Tomlin said and how demonstrative he was in saying it, that could have helped. Okay, I'm a that teammate. Help, what? help my irritation towards AB. All right, I've been I've been irritated with you, but the head coach just came on you so so hard in front of everyone to see. All right, that's exactly what I've been wanting to say. It's validated. Well, that, well Ryan did that before Tomlin spoke. Oh, well, him too. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he no, but he's saying that that's part coach. of Tomlin's yeah. excellence is right. the way he handled this. Maybe brings the team together. Sure. Okay, got you. Got you.